The world of food is exactly that. It's a world. And as food product developers, we have to pay attention to what is changing around us and the directions in which food is moving. You know, as a food product developer, I know that water surrounds me. I know I'm going to have to deal with water in every product that I design and develop. And I have to be able to work with it. I have to be able to control it. I have to be able to get it to do what I want it to do. A sound understanding of hydrocolloids provides you with an enormous toolbox when it comes to product development. People think food scientists are like chefs. That, that's a very common misconception. Food scientists are chemists. They look at things from a very chemical nature. No longer is the chef and the scientists coming from two different buildings, two different sort of campuses. Now they're in the same room. Now they're speaking the same language. And what that ultimately allows is for the two forces that are needed to move a product, to start from scratch, to create a product, those two distinct disciplines have come together and it's a collaborative situation. The chef comes in now and they can work together and they can provide the framework of I want this to be bright and beautiful and taste delicious and provide this type of total sensory experience and the food scientist can come in and say okay well this is the pH we're going to need, this is the bricks we're going to need, this is the dairy base we're going to have to have to do this. The best chefs in the world are using hydrocolloids. These ingredients are in their pantries. They're there, they're there to stay. They're being used in imaginative ways that help us as food product developers to go take a second look and say, hey, that's exciting, that's interesting. Maybe we can use that when it comes to our design of our products. And ultimately, that novelty, that creativity, that, that attention to detail, that attention to innovation, channel that into the new products that we design, whether they're for the retail space, for the food market space, or just for, the, for your table space. You want to understand those ingredients, you want to get the most out of those ingredients, and ultimately what that demands is an understanding of what these ingredients are, what's the science behind them, how do they behave. You know, we have these bright yellow beads in the solution, and they're colorful and they're playful. When the liquid moves, the insoluble material moves with it. But when the liquid's at rest, the insoluble material snaps into place and it will stay there. It may allow for an emulsion that's just smoother, is silkier, just a more decadent experience, a more indulgent experience. A gel is a gel is a gel. You've seen one, you've seen them all, right? Um, but that's not necessarily the case. Low acyl gel and gum fluid gels give you sort of this new creative space in which to play, to create a completely novel and a completely exciting and different type of beverage and cocktail. In a playful manner, you could also use the syrup as something that introduces texture. And obviously you could just add sugar to something and it will thicken. But in this case, what, what you could do is just take a calcium reactive pectin and sort of place it in the syrup. You won't know it's there. But the moment you have that calcium reactive syrup interact with any source of calcium, think of something like dairy. Dairy is very popular now. It's healthy. Your mother told you to drink it. It's a great product. You bring those two together and all of a sudden you have a change in texture. It's almost magical. And the key to that change in texture is this low methoxy amidated pectin, this calcium reactive pectin. When you think of something like a confection, obviously the sugar present in the system does that, but you need something to hold it together. Um, pectin is a very natural choice for something like that. You've got high solids, you have a HM pectin, a high methoxy pectin, a perfect choice to actually create a texture that's very different from a fluid or a semi-solid. In this case, cuttable, chewable. If you're clever about designing candies, you can really sort of pull it apart and control it. You'll have the sugar providing uh, plasticity. You'll have water, some water, and then you'll have a gelling agent of some sort. If you're clever about using pectin, you can create a system where everything is there to gel except for the acid. You have your pectin separate, your sugar all together blended, you add your acid to the system and all of a sudden, magically, you end up with a cuttable, biteable texture. If you imagine a gel that would stand boiling, or imagine a gel that would stand frying, or even, you know, blow torching, whether, whether you wanted to caramelize it or whatever you'd like to do. We know temperature is something that's very intimate when it comes to how you perceive a food. Depending on what you're using, if you heat it, it starts to melt out. Whether it's gel a gelatin or whether it's carrageenan, whether it's um, even some pectin gels will melt out. If you're clever about how you design these things, you can create a system that doesn't melt out that allows you to have that same texture all the way from sort of refrigerated temperatures all the way to 80 degrees Celsius. Um, you wouldn't need it at 80 degrees, but you certainly would have a different sensory experience. 
If you want something to survive that process, if you want to give your customer that option of serving temperatures and sensory experiences, you know, gel and gum can provide that. It can provide heat stability throughout a range of extremes. Heat stability is something that we can build into anything if we really need it. We're designing deliciousness. That's what we want to do. You see a lot of packaged sauces that have tons of sodium in it. And that's because the starch is muting the flavor. With reducing the starch and adding something like a xanthan gum to thicken your sauce, you're now able to reduce the sodium as well as get a better flavor release overall. Xanthan gum traditionally has been used in gluten-free products um, since the beginning of gluten-free products. What we've been able to do is take the need for xanthan gum, look at improving that product to make it better suited for the gluten-free types of bakery applications. You can actually now uh, use less xanthan gum than you would have before to trap more air, get better leavening, get less tunneling in your cakes and your muffins, and also suspend bits if you want to put blueberries, raspberries, strawberries within your cake or your muffin. You're designing sensory experience. You're designing something you want your customers to, to come away with. You're designing a perception. We're always trying to create new things. We're always trying to push the boundaries of what's possible. And the more we know about these ingredients, the further we can go. To have sort of the professionals to sit down with you and, and sort of talk about what you're doing and sort of, sort of start penciling it out and seeing where you need to go. And you need to be able to bounce ideas. You need to be able to iterate. You need to be able to try things. And once, uh, you know, partnering with CP Calco, partnering with Univar allows you to have a sounding board. You have this sounding board of expertise and this sounding board of, of, of creative input as well. It's a question of sort of ultimately saying, where do we want to go today? Together. <laughs>